Coming up next on Access Framingham TV is Framingham Fan to Fan, where we discuss all things sports in Framingham and beyond. Today we have a special guest, Dick Flavin, the Poet Laureate of the Boston Red Sox. Stay tuned. This is going to be rhythmic, poetic, and soxy. This is Framingham Fan to Fan on Access Framingham TV. Hi, I'm Dave Hornfisher, a Framingham sports fan, and I'm pleased to host this interview show whose purpose is to highlight those who are involved in sports at all levels. We hope through this show to increase awareness and ideally fan support of fun sporting events, especially in Framingham, but even in the Boston area, and also to help use sports to achieve our station's goal of building community. Today, I'm pleased to welcome a real special guest, Dick Flavin, the Red Sox Poet Laureate. A Poet Laureate is a really special title, and I can't think of many sports teams that would have one, but, but, but Dick, welcome. It's great to have you here. Thank and, you. Uh, I'm glad to be here today. <laughs> I guess at our age, we're all glad to be here, That's there, true. as they say, right? Uh, so why don't we just, uh, you, you've, uh, you, you know, while my show usually focuses on ju just people in Framingham, I, I feel like I'm almost ready to call you a Framingham native. I mean, we, we've had you at Amazing Things doing shows. We, we've had you on, on the station a few times with Dave Hutchinson, and, and, and you were telling me before you've had some other Framingham uh, appearances. Well, I, uh, I gave the commencement address at Framingham State the year that Krista McAuliffe uh, graduated from here. And uh, one of the uh, times in Framingham that I remember most is I accidentally booked two speaking appearances on Route 9 and thought I was just, thought I was just doing the one. I was transposing one to the other. On the day of the uh, two events, I realized that I was due at both places. <laughs> and so I, uh, I was doing a lot of speeding up and down uh, Route 9 trying to... Uh, Trying to cover my tracks with the, with both places uh -huh. that night. That's a long time ago. <laughs> so uh, why don't we just talk a little bit about? Did you grow up as a Red Sox fan? Uh, I I know we've got a little photo here of some very early Red Sox fans that may have even predated the two of us. But uh, 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 the picture there is a. <laughs> well, I tell people that I was born a Red Sox fan and baptized a Catholic, and that's <laughs> that's about the order of things. Uh, uh, around here. I've been uh, a Red Sox fan since, uh, since I can remember. Right. Do you have any early memories of going to Fenway as a kid? I do. I have uh, a memory of my father taking me to the first game and I remember walking along outside this building, it looked like a factory or something, and then we went inside and I thought I was in a dungeon or something. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was scared. It was jammed with people and it was dark and uh, uh, and we got to this ramp, and crowded ramp, and we walked up the ramp, and all of a sudden it became like that, the scene in the uh, Wizard of Oz, you know, it suddenly <laughs> yeah, becomes right. technicolor, yeah. and the sky is so blue, and the grass is so green, uh, I'll never forget it, and uh, all the hundreds or thousands of times that I've been in Fenway Park since then, uh, that was back in 1945, I still get that little Zing when uh, when I go into the ballpark. Uh, every, every time I take somebody to the park, I seem to get that reaction. When somebody's never been there before, I say, "Aha! I yeah. got a new one." Yeah. And then they walk up and they say, "Where are we going?" You know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but be, but but after that, you you had a lo rather long career with Channel Four, and you you must have a couple of media stories. Uh, you were a who, who would you compare yourself to on the air today, or or is there no comparison? I don't, th I don't think there is anyone, because I was uh, I kind of invented myself uh, doing uh, satirical uh, commentaries. Andy uh, Rooney? I, I, yeah, well, kind of not bad from Andy Rooney. Uh, yeah. I was kind of the political cartoonist okay. uh, drawing, the, drawing the cartoons with my words. Uh, uh, so I, I kind the, of... Uh, well, was this in the Kennedy area? Era? Uh, it goes back uh, to uh, 1970. Was the okay. first time right. I got okay. uh, yeah. on TV. Uh -huh. So it was it was after the JFK. Uh, right. A lot area. of Massachusetts politics then. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's always stuff to laugh about with Massachusetts politics. But uh, anything, any stories in particular that kind of stand out from that? Well, let's see. Uh, 
I remember one time uh, uh, Bruce Schwegler, who lives right down this road here in, uh, in uh, Cochichuit, uh, uh, he was he was a weatherman. He was remember, great in the yes. old days, uh, and uh, he was all excited about a storm coming in. And uh, uh, at that time, everyone at the anchor desk wore little lavalier microphones, and uh, uh, Bruce would have his microphone uh, over on, by the weatherboard, and he was giving the weather. And he asked uh, uh, Jack Williams. Uh, he said. Can I have 10 seconds at the end of the show because I, I'll go back and check my machinery to see whether the storm is going to hit or not? And they say, okay. So they come back and they go to uh, Mary Stewart, who, who was the uh, uh, movie and I remember theater her. reviewer. Yeah. And she was a very well endowed uh, <laughs> young woman. And uh, uh, Bruce came running back in at the end of the show. and. Uh, Jack said, uh, well, we'll go, uh, let's see for Bruce what the, what the latest update on the storm is. And Bruce starts in the weather, and he realizes that his microphone is back on the weatherboard, oh. and he doesn't have a, uh, a microphone. And he looks for the nearest microphone, <laughs> which Mary Stewart was wearing around her neck. <laughs> and he reaches in with both hands on, the, on, her, on her dress. It made, uh, it made for very interesting television. Not, probably live at the time, yeah. <laughs> Well, well, maybe that's enough TV highlights. Well, let's get back to the, let's move on to the Red Sox poet business. Uh, this is the, your, your book, I think we may have shown the cover before of the uh, uh, Red Sox rhymes, but uh, talk a little bit about the first poem. You were telling me before that you had a kind of a memorable moment there with the. Well, uh, I have been reciting Casey at the bat all my life, ever since uh, grammar school when I discovered that, <laughs> that poem. And when we were down in Florida with uh, Dom DiMaggio and Johnny Pesky visiting with Ted Williams when uh, Ted was sick and in fact dying, uh, I had to do something to justify my presence with these uh, mythic heroes of my boyhood. I think we have a picture of the teammates here on the uh uh, that will come up in a few seconds. And, uh, so so yeah. I, uh, I did a quick rewrite of Casey at the bat and made it about uh, the days right after World War II when Dom DiMaggio batted leadoff and uh, Pesky batted uh, second and of course yeah. the great Ted Williams uh, batted <laughs> third and I made the, the poem into Teddy at the bat and uh, recited it for the first time in front of uh, the three of those old men who uh, who've all gone on to their just rewards uh, since. Uh, and I thought that was the end of it. And then word of it got out back in Boston and I kept getting asked to uh, uh, recite it. And uh, I ended up reciting it all over the country. I've done it with the, uh, with the Boston Pops and at, uh, at the Hall of Fame out in Cooperstown. Well, that just begs me to ask you to do it here for our fans on AFTV. Well, I'll, I'll, try, I'll try the best I can. <laughs> Which camera am I? Just am I keep looking at me and it'll take care of it. <laughs> the outlook wasn't brilliant for the Red Sox nine that day. The score stood four to two with but one inning left to play. So when Stevens died at first and Tebbets did the same, a pallor read the features of the patrons of the game. A straggling few get up to go, leaving it a rest with the hope that springs eternal within the human breast. For they thought if only Teddy could get a whack at that. They'd put even money now with Teddy at the bat. But Dom preceded Teddy, and Pesky was on deck. The first of them was in a slump, the other was a wreck. So on that stricken multitude, a death-like silence sat. For there seemed but little chance of Teddy's getting to the bat. But Dom let drive a single to the wonderment of all. And Pesky, of all people, tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted and they saw what had occurred, there was Johnny safe on second and Dominic on third. Then from that gladdened multitude went up a joyous yell. It rumbled in the, rip, in the mountains and rattled in the dell. It struck upon the hillside and rebounded on the flat. For Teddy, Teddy Ballgame, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Teddy's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Teddy's bearing and a smile on Teddy's face. And when responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his hat. I'm making that part up. <laughs> no stranger in the crowd could doubt twas Teddy at the bat. 10,000 eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. 5,000 tongues applauded as he wiped them on his shirt. Then when the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, 
Defiance gleamed in Teddy's eye, a sneer curled Teddy's lip. And then the leather-covered sphere came hurtling through the air, and Teddy stood a-watching it in haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped. Whoomp! That ain't my style, said Teddy. Strike one, the umpire said. From the benches black with people went up a muffled of roar, like the beating of the storm waves on the stern and distant shore. Kill him, kill the umpire, someone shouted on the stand. And it's likely they'd have killed him, had not Teddy raised his hand. With the smile of Christian charity, great Teddy's visage shone. He stilled the rising tumult and bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher. And once more, the spheroid flew, and Teddy still ignored it. And the umpire said, Strike two! Fraud! cried the maddened thousands, and the echo answered, Fraud! 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 But one scornful look from Teddy, and the audience was awed. They saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain, and they knew that Teddy wouldn't let that ball <laughs> go by again. The sneer is gone from Teddy's lips. His teeth are clenched with hate. He pounds with cruel vengeance his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball. And now he lets... <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> he, he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Teddy's blow. Oh, somewhere in this land of ours, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, ha, ha, ha. And somewhere children shout. And they're going wild at Fenway Park because Teddy hit one out. I love that. That, that sneeze is uh, not written uh, in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the haughty <laughs> something or other. <laughs> Ted probably, he probably did. I wonder if he ever did sneeze <laughs> at the plate. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, this is timely this week because of the uh, PBS special on uh, Ted Williams. And uh, I, I saw you on it last night. Uh, well, how was your con how did your connection come about to that? Uh, uh, other my, than they heard the poem, <laughs> they had heard the poem. Um, the producer had uh, had read the teammates, uh, uh, which which about uh, right. Dom and Johnny and I's visit to see Ted, and uh, so they were aware of the whole thing, and uh, and they were aware that uh, that I was lucky enough to know him. Uh, uh, in the latter part of his life, and so they asked me to uh, yeah. be a part of it, and I was thrilled to be to be one. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that, that's that story of visiting him just just gives me chills whenever I think about it. And uh, well, it's and, and, it's, and the ride down with Dom and uh, and Johnny or Bo was it Bobby Dor? I no, Bobby was not yeah, with us. He, uh, he's an Oregon. Bobby's own wife uh, mm -hmm. was was very sick, and in fact herself uh, mm -hmm. dying at that point. So he stayed in uh, Oregon. So it was the uh, it was the three of us. The whole thing was, other than the birth of my children, the, uh, <laughs> the most memorable yeah, thing in my yeah. life. Uh, yeah, it would be like going to visit David Ortiz with Mookie and, uh, and Chris yeah. Sale in the car today. We, I mean, uh, we in that whole <laughs> ride down to Florida, we took, a, we took Dom's car. Uh, we didn't turn the radio on once. <laughs> the whole conversation was, was that interesting. Yeah. Fascinating. Well, yeah. Oh, that's incredible. That's a great story. Well, yeah, I mean, you've had so many moments at, at Fenway Park. I've got a little uh, image here of Fenway Park that, uh, uh, and, and I know at the 100th anniversary, you wrote a special poem about Fenway that uh, probably next to the Teddy one still kind of rattles in my brain every now and then. And when I hear you it say- It rattles in my brain, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so can, can I talk you into doing that one? Oh, sure, I'm easy. Uh, <laughs> More than a hundred years she stood here, her cheering, seen our tears, through all the good times and the bad. Fenway perseveres, she's baseball's great crown jewel, a treasure, this is why. Look out there on her field, you'll see the game, the ghost of games gone by. This Babe Ruth standing on the mound, Ted Williams at the plate, someone's great grandfather just came in through the gate. That's Jazz patrolling in left field and center Freddie Lynn. Cronin's playing shortstop, but Pesky's coming in. Louis Tiant whirls and spins, and then he lets it go. And there's another leaping catch by Dom DiMaggio. Jim Rice lines one off the wall. Malzone comes in to score. Pedroia makes a diving stop. Or is that Bobby Dorr? 
Fish kids went deep into the night, will it be foul or fair? It caroms off the foul pole and the cheers still fill the air. Dewey Evans' rifle arm just cut a runner down. There's Tony C, still young and strong, the toast of his hometown. Robert steals another base, pinch running for Malau. There's Lombard, Raddatz, Jimmy Fox, and Pedro, and Nomar. Look closely, you can see them all. They come there every day. Fenway was and is their home. It's where her ghosts still play. <laughs> and in the dugout by first base, there sits the current squad. Someday they will take their place with all the current gods. That's why that place is magic, why she's made such a mark. She's 106 and going strong, <laughs> and long live Fenway Park. Was that six years ago? Six years six, ago, boy, 2012. How time flies by. A lot of good stuff has happened then. I mean, you mentioned Yaz. And I think in terms of a magical season in my life, I was a young kid, just moved to Swampscott at the time, and we had a dog, we named it Sox, and, and, we, uh, yeah. and, and my wife and I were at the last two games, which was memorable. And uh, you know that was such a special year. I think we has a picture there of, of Yaz uh, making a catch in the World Series, at least I think he caught that the That isn't ball. the World Series. Oh. That's the, no, no, oh, maybe it is the World Series. St. Louis I thought it was boy. a catch from the, he made no. a catch just like that in Yankee Stadium yes, with when Billy Rose, Rose yes. uh, yes. uh, one oh. hitter, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was such a special year. I, I've never seen a player have a year like that. I, I mean, it Poppy was, and some people have had good ones, but every time they needed something, it seems like he did it. Every, every single time. It was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. And, and, and I know you felt a challenge doing a poem about Yaz, and you know, uh, uh, I, uh, <laughs> that's one of my... <laughs> Carl Yastrzemski, he wore number eight. In the field and at bat, my God, he was great. For 23 years, he carried the load. A player like that deserves his own ode. But here is the rub. Yastrzemski won't rhyme with any word I have been able to find. I've lain awake nights. I've done the research. I can't find a rhyme. I am left in the lurch. There just is no word to rhyme with Yastrzemski. And take that from one who has made the Yastrzemski. <laughs> You don't have to be shameless to do that stuff, <laughs> yeah, you but, do, uh, I know. but it helps. Well, that's a gem that I always enjoy. I know. You, you still haven't gotten. You still haven't gotten one, huh? What? You haven't gotten the word yet. No. <laughs> haven't got. A, haven't got a word to rhyme with your yeah. yet. No. Yeah, yes, is, is probably possible. But, but then you know. But then you know. For all of us, you know, who '67, and then we got through '75, which was close, and uh, and then we had all these championships. And, and I think we're going to have a little a couple images coming up here of, uh, of some of the three, uh, the three rings here that have happened in the 21st century. And they, yeah, there's one from the 2004 team. Is there something in that image that, uh, that, that brings out the ode and our poet laureate? Well, I can, uh, I can remember one that I did, uh, which is a, a, uh, a spin-off on Casey at the bat or Teddy at the bat. And it goes like this, the outlook wasn't brilliant for the Red Sox nine that night. Let's do a piece of Down three games to none, ninth inning, end in sight. So to that, to that beckon, to that uh, uh, stricken multitude, <laughs> ignominy beckoned. Then pinch runner Roberts made a dash for second. The catcher came up throwing, Jeter raced to take the ball. Roberts stove, the play was close, safe was the umpire's call. What happened next will be retold for years in baseball lore. For that theft, start, started, that theft spawned a comeback unheard of before. <laughs> Miller singled Roberts home, and several innings later, Big Poppy put the game away with a home run tater. The Sox went on to win game five, game six, and then game seven. The Yanks were dead, the cards got swept, and hello, baseball heaven. There was cheering, there was singing, and heroes filled the place. But it never would have happened had not Roberts stole that base. <laughs> I love that. I think that Bill Miller never got the credit that he deserved for that. Miller, Roberts could have stole the base, but if Miller didn't get that hit. That's true. You know, and uh, I think it's easier to steal a base than get a hit. I mean, these guys steal at 50%. Well, I don't know. Uh, the, uh, you know, you know. Uh, uh, Mariano <laughs> Rivera was the pitcher. Yeah. And, and he knew that... Uh, Roberts was going. Sure, he was. And he he was threw there. over about three or four times, uh, and uh, the catcher was Jorge Posada, and he knew uh, that Roberts yeah. was going. So it was. Uh, it wasn't easy. Yeah. It was not easy. Uh, <laughs> he gets the biggest ovation of anybody yeah. on a return to Fenway. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he does. 
but I think that was just such a special moment. You know, just everybody's father uh, who was in a grave could smile at that point. You well, know, partic they, particularly <laughs> after uh, the 2003, the way the, the oh, season ended that year. I remember thinking after, after 2003 when we, when we blew the lead against the Yankees in the uh, seventh game of the American League Championship right. Series. I said, you know, maybe, maybe we're not going to win in, in my lifetime. Maybe <laughs> I'm going to suffer the same fate that my father uh, suffered. Uh, but by God, they, they did it the next yeah. year. <laughs> the old joke, my Red Sox killed my father and they're coming after my yeah, grandkids or something. <laughs> It was, yeah. it was first said by Marty Nolan, who, who was then uh, uh, an editor of The Globe, and uh, he said after the uh, uh, ball went through Bill Buckner's legs, right. oh, okay. he said, uh, the Red Sox killed my father and now they're coming after <laughs> me. My grandkids down in Texas, my son was, he, he, he said, you know, he told me a couple of times, he said, you know, maybe I oversold the, this being a Red Sox fan business. <laughs> but no, they've had three in their, in their, in yeah. their, in their last five, 10 years or so here. And, uh, and then seven, 2007, uh, you know, that one, was, that one was magical too. And, uh, 2007. We've got another kinda, little photo of that one, but. Uh, kind of gets uh, 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 lost in the. Le you know, yeah, it does. It's like the middle child, yeah. you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, we, but Papelbon didn't think so. There's, a, there's our image of. Uh, and oh. 2013 <laughs> was uh, uh, such a poetic victory when nobody expected them to, uh, mm. uh, to, to, to do what they did. And, uh, in 2007, they just they were wire to wire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a great team. In 2007, it might have been the best team of the three championship teams. I think this is the 2013 image that comes up now, which was the uh, when the Red Sox won the first one at home. Yeah, uh, and, and that one, uh, you know, was certainly David Ortiz's big end of career moment. He had some big moments, certainly in 04 that he saved yeah. the thing a few times. But uh, the home run against Detroit uh, did, did that inspire? A, it did, it did. Uh, start carving the statue, get the site ready, right on the sidewalk between Yaz and Teddy. He's king of clutch hitters, fit him for the crown. Get driving instructions to old Cooperstown. He's our Hall of Famer, he'll get there with ease. The Pope will proclaim him St. David Ortiz. To us, he's Big Poppy, we love it that way. The Big Pop's in his bat when he saved the day. Other teams feared him from east to west coast. He launched all those big bombs when it mattered most. On the day that he is installed in the hall, Sox Nation will be there, his fans one and all. And when that hall plaque is put into his reach, we pray that he'll launch no F-bombs in his speech. <laughs> that was a special oh, moment. We're still on? <laughs> we're still on the air. I was actually at that game, too, and I didn't hear it. I was busy. I had a film, my camera, trying to take a picture of it. And, oh, really? Yeah, and I missed it completely after that. I mean, that was a great game, too. Uh, oh, they yes. had a last-inning home run that kind of won it. And, yeah. Uh, what about the current team? Which, I, I mean, this has the feel of another year. Uh, you know, and, uh, am, I ho uh, am I being sucked in too, too fast again? Uh, I don't know, you know, we never know how it's going to turn well, out, but this is a good team. It is. This is a good team. And uh, it's Mookie's team, and I love to watch him because, because <laughs> he loves the game so much. There he is. There's Mookie. Oh, a little, little small for T.O. Oh, there we go. Nobody and, uh, has more fun. He has fun. a gold glove, and he's got his, he hits home runs, he steals bases. Uh, he, he just does it all. He does it all and has a wonderful time doing it. He's, if you look at him, they take, they take a shot of Mookie. He's always got a big smile on his face. Yeah, yeah. No, no F-bombs. No F-bombs. And no spitting and, in the uh, outfield. And David, uh, 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 J.D. Martinez, uh, he reminds me, in one way at least, of Ted Williams in the, uh, in the scientific way that he goes about. Yeah, he uh, does. Uh, uh, each at bat, and he never gives an at bat away, never gives a pitch away, and he's got an idea. Maybe he doesn't do it, maybe he doesn't complete it, but he's got an idea of what he wants to do every time he uh, he comes up there. And I think it's uh, it's going to uh, help him to guard against prolonged slumps. We all go through slumps, you know. We forget in the in the aftermath. Ted Williams went through slumps in in his day. Mm -hmm. It's a hard game. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, what, what did Ted say? They're throwing a round ball at a round bat and you have to hit it square? Oh, it's, uh, you know, <laughs> you stand up there. Uh, I stood in there once 
playing Sandlot. I wasn't a good player at all. And this kid was a high school pitcher, and he threw a fastball at me that was that was in tight. Maybe it was 80, maybe 82, I don't know. Maybe it was 75, I don't know. At any rate, it was coming like the, the dickens at me. I pulled my hands in and realized after the fact that I hadn't pulled my hands in until the ball was in the, <laughs> in the catcher's mitt. And uh, there is a, an element of danger that every time a player goes up to yes. bat, that he faces. When that ball is coming at you, nobody doesn't throw 95 miles an hour now. It's a uh, lot of trust in the pitcher. Yeah. I remember Ryan Duran from the Yankees, and he had the big, thick glasses, and he'd come in and he'd deliberately throw he's, the first one off the screen, I think. Throw it off the backstop, and, yeah. Uh, and I think there's some today that kind of do that. It's an yeah. intimidating, let alone curveballs. That well, was the end of my baseball. You know, the, uh, uh, so many of these pitchers, the great ones, use... Uh, that uh, Pedro stuff. was uh, Pedro, yeah, he was, Roger yeah. Clemens, uh, yeah. uh, Nolan Ryan, all those, uh, yeah. all those guys. Yastrzemski used to tell me that uh, he said you'd relax a little when you were pitching against when you were batting against Nolan Ryan if you get ahead on the count three and zero. Oh, and you, okay, he's gonna he's gonna yeah. throw a get me over fastball, and he said the the next one to come in right at your chin. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, we, you know, the clock is winding, beginning to wind down here. And uh, one of the things that, that, that's been most fun, we, we did talk about the championships, but uh, we didn't mention the Bosox Club. And I, I, I've had a chance to see you at that a number of times and got to know you a little bit through there. But I, I have a picture of, of one of my favorite memories of, of going to a Bosox Club meeting after the trophies came ah, out. Ah, there he is. And, and there they are. And, and where else could, could, could you go and get, a, you know, get somebody to take a, take, take a picture of you? Uh, with, it, with with those trophies, they were, uh, you know, you, you've uh, you, you you've been a real f regular and a supporter of the Bosox Club. Well, it's a club. wonderful club. Um, mm -hmm. You get to see uh, uh, the players. We had uh, Mookie Betts there. Right. Uh, I have a picture with him last yeah. month, uh, um, yeah. and uh, the history of it is is wonderful. It started up the year that. Uh, the, 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 of the Impossible yeah. Dream Team in right. 1967. And the first president was? Was Dominic DiMaggio, my uh, yeah. hero. Uh, yeah. Who should I, be in the Hall of Fame. Oh, he should be in the Hall yes. of Fame. Yes. Yeah. He holds uh, defensive records, which to this yeah. day, yeah. Uh, most uh, put-outs and chances accepted over uh, uh, the course of a career per game of any outfielder, mm -hmm. uh, in history, he uh, when he was a rookie, he didn't start at the uh, right. beginning of the year. He he played right field when he first got into the lineup, and uh, was in the outfield only for 96 games and led the league in assists. Nobody's ever led the league in assists. <laughs> Uh, a period well, I think we're going to have to again. end it on Dom. My clock says we're, we're, we're down to the end of this, Dick. I could spend uh, all night and all day talking with us, especially, especially you know, you only did about a half a dozen of the poems that are in this book, uh, which, is, which is an absolute gem. Anybody that wants to have some fun reading about the Red Sox. Most of the stuff about the Red Sox is so serious. And you've been able to really bring some brightness and some energy, and at the same time, really show the the tradition in, 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 in what it's like to be a fan. And well, so, it's, it, they've given me great enjoyment, and uh, yeah. you know, they've broken my heart lots of times, but uh, it's been a great ride. I'm, well, thank you very much for taking the time to come out to Thank Framingham. you, Dave. Yeah, this has been terrific. Thanks. Yeah.